Hello and welcome to From Where We Are. In this episode, I'm flying through some very cold landscapes. Paddle faster, baby. We need to reach home. We have a puncture in the boat. I spend a very cold night in the tent. And Elena takes a very cold bath. We are Elena and Vincent. We have converted a 4x4 Sprinter van to be our home on wheels and embarked on a trip around the world. From Patagonia to Canada, over to Eastern Siberia, and back to Europe via Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, and so much more. At least, that's the plan. The rest we'll find out. Here we'll share our experiences and observations from where we are, wherever that may be. In the last episode, we left Patagonia National Park to explore the area around Monte San Lorenzo in the heart of Patagonia. We came across the traditional Patagonian sheep farming ranch and were invited to watch the gathering and shearing of sheep and learned about life on a remote estancia. We arrive back at Lake Chilenko and find the place lying calm as a mirror. Wow, look how deep it goes in here. If I drop the phone now, this is, this is like the abyss. It's, it goes into the nothing. Crazy. This lake, it's not always that it's like this. You look and it's like, ah, oh, such a nice calm water. This thing can become a sea. Six years ago, Doug Tompkins, alpinist, founder of the North Face and the Tompkins Conservation from two episodes ago, got into a storm while kayaking on the lake and capsized in the cold waters. Police and military considered a rescue too dangerous. Philippe Reuter, an alpinist and helicopter operator, received the info about the men in distress. He and one of his pilots packed a climbing rope and flew out. They managed to find the crew, pulled the kayaks to shore with the helicopter and flew the critically hypothermic Doug Tompkins to the nearest hospital. But after hours in the cold water, it was unfortunately too late. I get in touch with Philippe, who still runs a helicopter out of Puerto Guadal. They have a Chilean TV production coming up, a free seat in the helicopter, and I get to hitch a ride. We're flying west towards the edge of the northern Patagonian ice field. The aspect that fascinates me most about photography, having a camera in my hand, is not necessarily the photographic results, but the experiences and learnings that come with it. The camera motivates you to go out, to be open-minded and to develop an understanding of the world around you. Getting a chance to see and photograph the place we've been calling home for over a year now for our book project has been a dream of mine for a long time.
Half an hour outside of Puerto Guadal, we find a remote beach and declare it the most beautiful spot we've yet encountered with the car. We are joined by fellow overlander JD and his trusty troopy for a couple days and receive most valuable insight for when we will someday be in the United States. It's a tortilla chip in America. Oh God, I like it already. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, the brand is Juanita's and they're Juanita. tenfold better than the next best. It's like when you, oh. when someone has certain things in their pantry, you'd, you'd be like, okay, I trust this person. We've fallen in love with this place. And instead of staying here for a couple of days, we stay for three months, an entire summer in Patagonia. And while I enjoy the view, Elena provides the soundtrack for the summer with her very own traveling band. Na bruma leve das paixões que vem de dentro Tu vem chegando pra brincar no meu quintal No teu cavalo, peito no cabelo ao vento E o sol coarando nossas roupas no varal Sussurrou no meu ouvido Eu não duvido Já escuto os teus sinais Que tu virias Numa manhã de domingo Eu te anuncio Nos sinos das catedrais Tu vês Life is great, except fresh water is not always as easy to come by as I'd like. Over the three months that we're here, I'm watching the sunset over the northern Patagonian ice fields on the other side of the lake. There is one place I'm still dying to see before we leave. It's half a day by car, half a day of hike, then a 10 km traverse by boat and another full day up a steep route until a logical camp right before stepping onto the ice. But summer has already come to an end and the weather is too unreliable this time of year. I've already given up hopes when Philippe gives me a call and says that there is a good weather window coming up and he might be able to drop me off near the ice fields on a scheduled transportation flight. How incredible is that? And then I'm in the helicopter again. We're flying west through the most beautiful valleys, still untouched by civilization. The trees in their autumn dress paint the scenery red and the snow line has moved down to about a thousand meters. Winter is coming. In the distance, the mountains at the edge of the ice field slowly rise, as does my excitement. After a while, the views open up. We follow the meandering river up to its source, a huge lake fed by a multitude of glacial tongs amidst which I'm hoping to spend the night. From the air, Felipe gives me a brief rundown how to best ascend the ridge ahead and then drops me off on a little plateau by the side of the mountain. Now I'm on my own. 
which also means that I'm very dependent on this guy picking me up again because <laughs> there's literally no way down from where I am right now except for with a helicopter or getting a boat somewhere with the inReach. But Philippe is a very dependable guy. I'm very, very thankful for him. It's really incredible that he's taking me here. Thank you, Philippe, if you see this. All right, let's get going, see what this place is about. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep, I think this will be my spot for the tent. Time to prepare camp. This, I believe, is Mont San Valentin, the highest mountain here in southern Patagonia. And here's my little tent, the place to sleep for the night. And what a place this is. It is estimated that about a million years ago, the Patagonian ice sheet spanned the width of the continent here in the southern Andes. 12,000 years ago, most of the ice had disappeared, leaving behind the rugged coastline of fjords and valleys that Chilean Patagonia is known for today. An estimated 4% remains. The southern Patagonian ice field is well known for the famed mountains of Fitzroy and Cerro Torre. The smaller northern Patagonian ice field, with an area of roughly 120 by 60 kilometers, by all means not small, remains relatively low-key and out of the spotlight. The sun just set while I was flying the drone and immediately it got really, really cold. Definitely below freezing now. Really happy to, to have an expedition sleeping bag for these matters. First time I'm using it actually. Supposedly should keep me warm until something like minus minus 11, minus 15. I guess after this night I'll, I'll have a first impression of that. Wow, I will make something to eat now. Hmm. <laughs> Wow, comfort limit minus 13, extreme minus 33, Pajak radical 10z. I think this looks pretty damn good. That is a decent sleeping bag. Oh, nice. After a quiet and cozy night, I get up at dawn to see sunrise. Good morning. Sun will rise in 30 minutes, but already the color palette is uh, getting really, really beautiful. I love these pastel colors on the mountains, on the glacier. Very, very nice. I can't stop to soak in the environment lit by early morning sunlight before picking up and heading back down to the pickup location. This was such a beautiful little place. Now I'm heading down again, uh, back to the pickup location. Philippe will probably pick me up in something like five hours. It's very nice that it hasn't snowed, so it's very convenient to just backtrack my steps from yesterday everywhere in between these big boulders there's i don't know a meter deep holes covered by the snow if you step in there <laughs> it's a good fall and then this is what happens bye bye leaky let's see if i can buy a new one in koyake And just like that, my brief little excursion to this high alpine mountain world is over. It's been an incredible experience, 
and I'd like to thank Philippe from the Terra Luna Lodge in Puerto Guadal for the help to make this dream happen. What did I do? <laughs> in the next episode, Helena gets stuck in an icy swamp go, go. and we drive the Carretera Austral North in search of warmer climates. Not without some serious trouble along the way. The car has just completely died from the electrics. Um, we're officially going zero kilometers an hour. <laughs> we're excited if you click subscribe and come follow along. <laughs>